Uh, I stand in support, Mr. Speaker. In support, please Mr. proceed. Mr. Speaker, I, I hate to do this, but I, I want to break out my Nostradamus hat again that I put on at second reading, and I said if, if this didn't go 30 years or in perpetuity, the city would have to increase property taxes. And what did we see in this morning's paper? The mayor there is eight to 10%. And my concern is the widow who's living in Pearl City, single family home on a fixed income, and how is she gonna pay that? Right now we export fully one third of it to the visitor. I think that's a pretty good deal. Mr. Speaker, where is the vision? I support the chairs and what they're doing here, uh, but I'd like to see us go farther. The, the vision, Mr. Speaker, is it's gotta go to the University of Hawaii. Everybody knows that. I think that's kind of like the dirty secret. Because if it stops at Albemarle, it's simply a white elephant. We need to get those kids from the west side out of their cars, taking the train all the way to the beautiful Manoa campus in an air-conditioned rail car. They will do that. I have children right now who drive every day to the UH campus, if given the opportunity to ride the air-conditioned train where they could do their homework and not be bothered, they would do that, Mr. Speaker. So it's got to go to the University of Hawaii. Now, is everybody happy with the way things have gone? Of course not. When you go into battle in the military, th th as soon as the first shot's fired, the battle plans go out the window because there's unforeseen circumstances. Now, we've extended it another two years, but what if in the, in the process they come across a, a brownfield or a dump which has hazardous material, asbestos, and all sorts of stuff in it? That's going to increase the costs exponentially. Now, the average person on the street's not happy with the, the barrage of negative media, the, the, the terrible news stories every day, out over cost, over cost. Uh, a few months ago, I, I, there was a positive story, uh, and it was on, buried on page B19, that uh, one of the contractors was gonna refund the city $200 million. Wasn't on the front page, was buried. And that's what the average citizen are up against. Mr. Speaker, the average person is unhappy with the conduct of the current project because all they hear is the negative information. They don't hear about the blizzard of positive economic activity that is going to occur when this thing is finally built. The, the shops, the, the, the condominiums that will be built along the rail line to provide young families the opportunity to own something and grow equity so someday they could buy their dream home, maybe out in the country. Mr. Speaker, there's a lot of criticism of the mayor. He's no particular friend of mine. We're in different parties, he's endorsed my opponent. But he's be appeared before the people at least twice on the ballot and he's been rehired to do the job. So in spite of the negative aspects that some people wanna point out with regard to his performance, he's still been rehired it, just as last year because he says he's gonna finish the job. Now, Mr. Speaker, my, my vision for this project is it runs all the way to the University of Hawaii. I have had the opportunity to have lunch with a former governor uh, about a, mm, six, eight weeks ago. And he said, you guys should just pass the tax one time, wipe your hands of it, and let the city take care of it after that. I agree with him. This is a city project, but yet we keep micromanaging them, keep asking them to come back for dribs and drabs. Let them run the project, give them the opportunity, and, and they can be accountable for the tax. We give them the opportunity to, to use it, it's up to them, and I think they will use it. One last thing is, th this is the most important public works project we have un ever undertaken in the state. No one has built a train system in the state before. So there's things that we're learning. There's a steep learning curve. We don't know everything. But I would also like to say, where is the leadership from the governor? Where is he on this? I mean, you know, people tell me, they said, Bob, you got 76 egomaniacs running around there. Where is the leadership? 75, okay. <laughs> where, where is the leadership? I guess you're not talking about yourself. <laughs> well, that leaves space for one. Everybody can say it. it's not talking about me. But where's the leadership? This is the most important project in the state. Where is the governor? What is his position on this? I'd be interested to know. The people would be interested to know. And with that, Mr. Speaker, and with all respect for the chairs, they both did a great job. Transportation chair, I really liked his measure. I respect the finance chair. Uh, I'd just like to see us dream and have a bigger vision. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Representative.